I mean, when you look at it, I'm not positive now that because I had thought, you know, Green Bay has got to be a prohibitive favorite to win home field uh, in the in the NFC again. And I'd probably, you know, who knows? I, I, I mean, I'm glad that the season doesn't start today because there's a lot of changes that are still to be made. But I think the way I look at this now, Mike, is that this opens up the NFC and and particularly particularly it, assuming if Deshaun Watson at some point ends up somewhere uh y- y- you know in the in the in the NFC South if he ends up there how many games is he going to play and let's say for the sake of argument Mike if I'm an NFC South team and I see that Deshaun Watson is in suspended and let's pick a number for the first eight games of the season, let's just say, and let's say he loses his appeal. I mean, you can imagine the pressure on Howard Katz, on Mike North and that entire scheduling department to make absolutely sure that every NFC South opponent, or that no NFC South opponent gets to play whatever team Watson is on twice in the first eight weeks of the season. That's a weird thing to look at. It's a weird thing to say. And, you know, we don't know when the NFL is going to rule on this. But if I were the schedule makers, let's say he signs with the Saints, I would be sure that the Saints would have three division games like in the last six weeks. Because otherwise, you're going to get, somebody's going to scream at you for, you know, for disadvantageous scheduling in allowing Team X in the NFC South to be finished with whatever team signs Watson in the first six weeks, which sometimes happens in the NFL. Not often, but it sometimes does. So those are the little things that, uh, I mean, so many, there. I, I can't, I, usually... March 18th, which is what today is. We're heading into a little bit after the wave of free agency is over. We're heading into a little bit of the doldrums. You get the league meetings and then it's just draft hype for three weeks. But now there are so many tributaries and so many stories still happening. I I mean, I just, there's not, there's not been an off season like it in the 38 years I've covered the NFL. Let me reel back a couple of minutes because you said something that caught my attention. Do you believe that the NFL will factor in a potential suspension of Deshaun Watson into the schedule making process? And if you believe the NFL would do that, well, 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 but why? Why do you have to do it? Why do you have to do it? These teams that are pursuing Deshaun Watson. Hang on. Let me. 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 Let me just say this. Sound like Kramer. It's on those teams. If you're, if you're, I was trying to sound like Mad Dog. If, if, uh, I love that guy. Um, What was I saying? If you're a team that is trying to trade for Deshaun Watson, and there's been this clamoring, the moment the grand jury returns nine, uh, no true bills, uh, fancy lawyer talk that I still don't understand 30 years after graduating law school, but I digress. After the grand jury does that, there's this, oh, let's go get Deshaun Watson. Everything's fine. He's free and clear. He's free and clear. The truth came out. No, he's got 22 civil lawsuits hanging over him. There's a chance he's going to be suspended. We don't know what the NFL is going to do. Well, we're going to go get him anyway. Well, fine. Hey, you know what? Sucks for you if you don't have him the first eight weeks of the season. And if you're the Saints, you got to play the Buccaneers twice in the first eight weeks. Too bad. You shouldn't have gone after him. Now, I just, I see it as two different silos in the league office, or at least it should be. They should not, in my opinion, structure the schedule to do favors to anyone. You went and traded for this guy. You made a 10-year trade. It's going to be a little bumpy this year because you're going to have to get by without him, and you're going to have to play the Bucks twice in the first eight weeks because that's the way the computer generated the best possible schedule that we decided to use for the benefit of the entire league. The computer has the ability to take factors a jillion of them into account. And it'll be very easy because I've seen this, Mike. I've been in the room. I've watched. I haven't watched the process, but when it's over, I've had it explained in triplicate to me. Um, 
and the NFL can easily say, let's say he signs with the Saints, that we want one game after November 15th against, first of all, there has to be one in the last week of the season, okay? And it won't be all that unusual to play each division opponent once in the last eight weeks of the season. It's, it's not going to be that unusual. And to me, yeah, you can say what you want about, hey, you know, that, that isn't fair and, and all that stuff. And of course, you know, if the Bucks, I'm sure the Bucks would want to get the Saints. If, it, if he does sign with the Saints and Watson suspended eight weeks, they'd love to get uh, Watson, or they'd love to get the Saints twice by November 1st. Of course they would. And they might. But the NFL has it within their power and just my guess is that they will insert that as a factor so as not to make it disadvantageous for one team, uh, you know, who's got to play Deshaun Watson twice in the last eight weeks of the season. I mentioned this for one very important reason. We're going to take a break in a couple of minutes, and we're going to talk more about the status of the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. However, I think this is important, and it came up organically. Dateline, April 21, 2010. To bring together a couple of names we've mentioned in the past five minutes, Howard Katz and Chris Mad Dog Russo. Katz was on with Russo that day, talking about the then newly released 2010 schedule. At the time, Ben Roethlisberger was due to be suspended the first six games of the season. The Steelers' first primetime game on the 2010 schedule, coincidentally, was Roethlisberger's first game back. And our good friend Chris Russo was justifiably skeptical about the schedule-making process to engineer it that way. Kat said, I didn't have the slightest idea what kind of suspension the commissioner was going to hand down when I did this. I make the schedule. I have no put into the suspensions, nor did I have any insight into the suspension. It was pretty clear to me he was going to wind up getting some kind of suspension. I really didn't anticipate that it would be that lengthy, yada, yada. Purely coincidental is what he said. Now, I made the mistake of just questioning whether it was coincidental and Katz was not happy with me. That was 12 years ago. I think the statute of limitations is run on me saying publicly he was not happy with me. But that's why I'm thinking of this. That's why the synapses in my brain connected, because they have created the impression in the past that they don't care, that they make the schedule without regard to how long a guy's going to be suspended, when he's going to be back. And frankly, Peter, by the time they crunch the final schedule, I don't know. Will we know? You know, I, we, we, we need to take a break and talk so. more about Watson. But let me just say this. Let me just say this. Yeah. If Deshaun Watson decides he is going to fight these 22 civil cases through to a verdict and he somehow wins every single one of these cases, not criminally charged, and ultimately a verdict in his favor, 22 out of 22 times that he did not violate the rights of anyone, what do you do to him? What do you do to him at that point? What do you suspend him for at that point? What can you justifiably suspend him for if he fights this to the end and wins 22 out of 22 civil cases? I'm not saying he's going to. I'm not saying he's going to. I'm passing no judgment on the merits of the cases. I'm just recognizing the possibility that he could lose all 22. He could win all 22. Because the NFL in recent years has been more inclined to wait until they absolutely positively have no choice but to act. Because they've learned in the past when they act too soon, they step on a rake. So I, I just... I doubt that by the time they generate that final schedule, we're going to know how many games Deshaun Watson will miss, if any, in 2022. I agree with you. I don't, I don't think on, you know, the schedule is going to be released, whatever, May 5th, 8th, 10th, something like that, first 10 days of May. And I think there's a very good chance we're not going to know at that point uh, how long he's going to be suspended for. But you can clearly make a an educated guess and that educated guess to me would be half the season now mike you're right about what you said and that in that there's a chance obviously that in 22 cases deshaun watson can fight all those and win well first of all we're not going to know that by the time the nfl has to make this decision this is this is going to take a while unless unless as you know, I mean, you were in this business, unless there is some sort of global settlement 
with the 22 people who have filed these complaints. So, you know, I, I guess theoretically it is possible, but I don't think that's going to happen. And I do think the NFL is going to have to make a decision based on the mud that it has been drawn through or it has been dragged through um, with all of these Deshaun Watson stories. Here he is, a top five quarterback in the NFL, missed all of last season because of this case. And now just because they don't have a final determination, the NFL is just going to say, never mind and let them play. Well, I, I don't think that's going to happen, but when it will happen, I have no idea. There was a thought last year, specifically within the Dolphins organization, I'm told that if they had acquired Deshaun Watson and Stephen Ross insisted on all 22 cases being settled. 18 of the plaintiffs were ready to go. There were four holdouts, so it didn't happen. But if it had happened, a global settlement last October, early November, the Dolphins believed he was going to be suspended six games. So, again, the NFL keeps its card close to the vest on this. They've learned to delay action as long as they can. This is a complicated, nuanced situation, and it's not going away anytime soon unless there is a global settlement that Deshaun Watson reaches. The problem is if Tony Busby, who represents the 22 individuals, knows that there's an urgency to settle the case for football reasons, the price goes up. That's just the He'll way it works. A harder passing judgment. But that's, that's, that's you know, it doesn't matter. Well, I thought you're in this to get justice for your clients. Well, justice comes in a lot of shapes and sizes, and leverage is very important. And if we sense that you want out, we want more money to make it go away. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.